Hi, these comments are for IT. This is Michael from BetterTofelScores.com, and I'm evaluating a writing speaking practice test that you sent me. I'm also evaluating a speaking practice test that you sent me. So let's get started first with the writing. So you took this from, uh, this is my integrated writing practice test number one. So let's take a look at what you wrote here. So I'm, I'm, I've already looked through it a little bit and let me do a couple of things here. I'm gonna review it just quickly. Microsoft gives you a, an editor score of 86%. You have a few minor problems in there, nothing major, but usually if you get closer to 100, that's a good sign. Not that Microsoft is going to find all your errors, but it does help. Okay. So I'm looking at a couple of things here. Uh, your average words per sentence is 24.1, and I think right around 25 is that's strong. And your characters per, per, characters per word is very, very strong at 5.1. Therefore, your grade level here is 13.5. So you're definitely writing academic writing. This is college level writing. I can tell from the sentence uh, length and the vocabulary length of your words. So good job on that. Okay, give me a quick second. Let me kind of look through uh, what you've written here. Give me a quick second. So I'm looking at introduction. I'm looking at the introduction first. Be careful about how employees as businesses want to increase. You don't want to say you're there. You want to say there, right? Okay, the only problem here is you want to do a little bit better showing the relationship. So if, if you simply say the reading passage gives three specific tips on how to make businesses more successful and the speaker in the lecture cast doubt on those three assertions. That's it. Okay, let's go to the next paragraph. So I don't think you exactly showed that the lecture here is disagreeing or refuting the points mentioned on, in, in the reading passage. Let's look at paragraph two here. Good, I like we said the lecture on the other hand. Good, that shows the opposite relationship. Good use of the transition word there. Let me keep going. And when you're talking about uh, more about the, the lecture, the company needs to prioritize short meetings, asserts the speaker maybe, maybe by putting exclusive deadlines to them. And I think you're going to have to change this to prioritizing because even though I didn't put it in there, it kind of means that. Yeah, I would just say that when you're doing the voice markers, you should probably have maybe two two voice markers that mention the reading and another two that mention the lecture that keeps everything framed as a summary. Let's go to your next paragraph here. I would probably change two points out that. I'm maybe change this to concentrate on what is most important with these required readings or something. 
maybe concludes the speaker. So I throw one more voice marker in there. This is looking pretty good, by the way. Okay, let me look at the last paragraph. Need to use your right report proposal. Yeah, this one's getting a little difficult to understand. The reading of employees. You might say used to. The reading is the employees used to write a report or proposal as like when they're in college. Separating the task into many steps. To finish, maybe lastly, maybe although, I'm going to put may, although employees may write a report or proposal as like when they're in college by separating the task in into many steps this writing process is too time consuming observes the author they have they should, therefore, write everything in one, I think you want to say, sitting. Maybe by writing their documents all at once, something like that. They should, therefore, write everything in one sitting by writing their documents all at once. The lecturer, to reinforce the claims. No, you got a lot of trouble here. This is, this is lowering your score. The lecturer to reinforce. No, the lecturer disagrees with this. The lecturer says that, that it's actually more time. It, it, workers can save more time by separating the steps of the writing process. It's actually better to do that, to follow the process. You said the lecture to reinforce claims that people need to write quickly, avoiding to overthink, and then revise as needed when the report. You're not kind of getting the whole thing there. If you said something like this, the lecture in contrast, so this is where you fall below, I think, uh, at this, at, you know, before I read this last part, of your final paragraph. Before I read that, uh, I was looking, I was thinking the rubrics here, maybe you might be uh, a four. Uh, let's see, let's look in the three area, displays unity, consistency, addresses a topic, although connection of ideas may occasionally, may be occasionally obscured. Yes, especially with reading point three and listening point three, to me, this is where you fall into the three area. But until the last paragraph, you're, you're probably between 25 and 30, right? So I think on this one, because of that final paragraph, where it says the lecture, what I would do is, is once you've said that they should therefore write in one sitting by writing their documents all at once, the lecture in contrast claims that workers should follow the steps of the writing process by making an outline and by revising 
what they have written. According to the speaker, this is the most efficient way to complete documents in a work setting. So you didn't quite show, I think, that, that idea there. So I'm thinking on the writing, I like, I think that E-Rater would definitely like your sentence length and also your vocabulary level. Both of those, I think your grammar and your vocabulary is strong. I'm going to put you at maybe 23 to 25 points uh, on this practice test. I think that's where I'm going to put you right now. Okay, so let's let's go over to. Okay, the next thing is let's take a look at the speaking that you sent me, right? So it says, Michael, please listen to evaluate and provide feedback on my independent speaking practice test number 41. You have received a $10 million check from a recently deceased relative. You must donate 50% of the money either to a hospital or to a school in your hometown. Which organization would you donate the money to and why? Use specific reasons and examples to explain your choice. All right. Here we go. And then before, give me a quick second here. Let me do one more thing here. Let me get the actual uh, TOEFL speaking rubrics here from ETS. Okay, here we go. Where is it? Wow, these guys didn't even get it. They couldn't even get rank number one at Google with this information. Wow. What is this all about? No, this is something else here. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to it. Um, I got the TOEFL ETS rubrics in my brain right here. I'm just going to do that. I went to Google to to find them, and I started finding a whole bunch of other websites other than ETS, so forget that. Okay, here we go. I would give all this money to a hospital, but not any hospital. Uh, a type of hospital that does uh, charity. First, because... Uh, hospitals requires a lot of very expensive machines and such as they often does not uh, they often or these hospitals often do not uh, have a lot of people donating as a school have because how about as a school has so be careful of your subject verb agreement Sometimes you're not quite sure whether to make your noun singular or plural, and then do you want a singular or plural verb after that? So that's a language use issue. Schools, they, they can receive a lot of money from ex-students, and okay. this right. does not used to happen with hospitals. That has a lot of cost. Yeah, it, it's what you did is a very generic response, right? So when we look at the delivery, the problem with your delivery is you're speaking too slowly. Listen to this. I would give all this money to a hospital, but not any hospital. Uh, a type of hospital that does. It's a little bit about you, you need to speed up maybe 10, 15 percent of your speaking rate, I think, to get closer to native speaker like. Another problem with delivery, I think, is your intonation. So you can study pronunciation lessons 36 through 40 to focus more on your tone if you want to do that. I think that would help. Uh, charity. The, the other problem is it's called under topic development. You're not really elaborating. You're not providing specificity uh, to your ideas. Listen to this. First, because uh, hospitals requires a lot of very expensive machines. 
you can see machines like a CAT scanner, a CAT scan, or machines to make x-rays of people's bones, or machines to monitor the heart. So you didn't really give any examples of any kind of machines that you think hospitals need, and then the and why, how these machines are so expensive. So you got to do better with your elaborating. This is also a problem with your language use because your vocabulary is basic. And they often does not. Uh... Notice how they often does not. Who is they? If you say these hospital administrators do not often, that's going to be more precise with both your language use and also your topic development. I uh, have a lot of people donating as a school has because... How about as a school has or as schools have? As schools, they, they can receive a lot of money from ex-students. Okay, I think I got it. So... I think on this one, based on what I've just listened to, I've listened to it almost a couple of times now. Uh, I'm going to put you at between 2.0 and 2.5. I'm going to put you maybe at maybe 16 to 18 points out of 30 on, on according to ETS's rubrics that they use to score this kind of response. So you're going to have to improve your delivery. I think by speaking a little bit faster with a more varied tone, you need to improve your language use. I think by using a combination of both basic and advanced vocabulary and grammar, and then you can improve your topic development by being more specific in the examples you use to support your generalizations. If you make those changes, you will get better. Now to help you with the topic development, if you go over to better TOEFL scores, that's my blog. I have a good lesson for you I think will help you. So go over to bettertoefelscores.com. Let me go over there myself. I can show you. So you're going to go into the, the, you see the search box? You can type in a lot of things in here, believe it or not. TOEFL speaking elab elaboration. Remember, there's 920 lessons in here. So if you type in some specific keywords, you can find lessons to help you with those areas. So I'm going to put TOEFL speaking elaboration, which I think you can do better with. And guess what? I have an article right here that talks about how to improve in this area. I think this is a really good lesson for you right now. Now, I think part of it is your vocabulary is a little bit too weak. So another thing you can do is if you go over to my my seven step system Yeah, give me a quick second. Yeah, if you go to the uh, stealth, you see it up here, stealth.michaelbuckoff.com. I enrolled you in my seven step system, right? So what you can do here is focus a lot right now, I think, on improving your vocabulary. Uh, you can start with the easy lesson, vocabulary lesson number three, basic TOEFL words. Then go to lesson four, which is more college level vocabulary, 500 words, A through E. You have all the practice exercises here. Then you have lesson five, which is E through P, another 500 college level words with practice exercises. And then lesson six, you have P through Z, the final 500 words here. And that's uh, more practice exercises there. So I think if you improve your vocabulary, that's going to give you a lot more range of what you can talk about. And you can be much more precise and specific with the examples you provide because you have a much better vocabulary to allow for that. All right, thank you for completing both the writing and the speaking. So what does this tell me? You're a stronger writer than you are a speaker. That's exactly what this is telling me here.